sleep. I mean, we can go crazy with sleep, right? Like I look at sleep efficiency primarily. So of the hours that you get, you know, are they really working for you? What's the quality of those hours? Um, which is huge. You know, it's, it's not as simple as saying, all right, you need to get seven to nine hours of sleep. It's like, all right, with the hours that you can afford tonight, what's the best, what's, what's, how can you get the most out of every single hour that you put in? And there's a number, there's, you wouldn't believe the amount of strategies. Breath work tends to be like one of the best and most accessible ways. It's literally the most accessible way to influence your physiology. Like right now, for example, I have to be mindful of all the talking that I'm doing because I'm constantly mouth breathing since I'm speaking. And that's putting me in a more sympathetic state, a more activated state. So I'm using more oxygen. I have my heart rate at a, at, a, at a higher level. I have my cortisol at a higher level. Every time that you're talking and I'm listening, I'm just nasal breathing. I'm pausing slightly between inhale and exhale. I'm spending about twice as long exhaling versus inhaling. I'm breathing into my face with my diaphragm rather than up into the nose or with my mouth and seeing a rise and fall in my, in my shoulders and in my upper chest. And these are all very, very small cues that make a big difference because they help, they help your body relax immediately. And the biggest changes that I've seen in my clients, like quality of life and sleep, I mean, I'm not going to say it's always the biggest, but especially with sleep, one of the biggest things that's so easily dismissed, so it's, it's so often overlooked is the breathing. Like how are you breathing either in anticipation for stress or during stress or even after stress? You can immediately change your breathing to feel better and manage stress and improve your HRV. I've done a number of podcasts on that with all kinds of experts. Patrick McKeown, the author of The Oxygen Advantage, a number of his disciples and students. I mean, all kinds of amazing people. So <laughs> there you <Yeah>. have it. <laughs> Unreal. Nah, the, the nasal breathing is one that I'm really fascinated by. There's so much in what you just said that I'd love to unpack with you. Um, I think we're going to have to do a number of podcasts to get through all <laughs> yeah. of it. But uh, I mean, I feel every one of these things that you mentioned is a podcast in itself, but I'm, I'm really familiar with Patrick McCowan. I had him on my yeah. running podcast that I told you about. Oh, no way. Uh, that guy's yeah, a man. legend. James, that guy's a living legend. He's a living legend. James Nestor as well. Um, oh, yeah. Who, I haven't had James on breath. yet. Yeah. Unreal guy. Uh, and both of them, I, I was listening to for health, but I was also fascinated because I coach a number of middle distance runners. And I was just curious about the way that nasal breathing could be of benefit to to these particular athletes. And that was my introduction. My, I think my introduction to breath work in general, like a lot of people, was just being exposed to the great man Wim Hof and hearing what he mm. said about the power of breath. And just due to how engaging he was and how funny he was that he shared the message, yeah. I went down that rabbit hole. But I had a number of sinus surgeries growing up. I had uh, two sinus surgeries. I was getting ready for a third. The long wow. story short is it turned out I had an, uh, an allergy to dairy or I was just having way too much dairy. I cut oh, that yeah. out of my life and never had to have that third sinus surgery. And now, wow. uh, uh, you know, as taught by uh, Patrick McCowan and James Nestor, I'll, I'll often sleep with my mouth taped up trying to tape, uh, trying to train those nasal passages and, and trying yep. to, um, I, I do it more for, um, I don't know if you would say the health benefits why, why did I start doing it? I was, I, I think I was curious just to see how beneficial it was to the actual nasal structure. If I tape my mouth yeah. shut, Patrick McCown explains that uh, pretty much your sinus tissue, it's like your ab muscle with training. It can become uh, a little bit more strength and not so floppy. You're not going to snore. Yeah. You're going to breathe more clearly. I've got quite a narrow nose, so I started to do that quite a lot. But I also noticed outside of all of that to touch on and to go back to what you said, whenever I'm stressed and I'm actually aware of my breath and what I'm doing with it, there's always a, a much more <laughs> thing going on. So it seems as though um, breath work, it's, it's become a, a really popular topic and rightly so because people have realized how much control they have over their, their mental state, their physical state when they actually become conscious of it. So, so with that and to, to dig into this one a little bit more, uh, what are some practical breath work strategies or breathing strategies that, people who aren't necessarily training to be world-class athlete, they just might be under the pump at home or at work or feeling the stress in traffic. What are some helpful ones that you recommend uh, that people can tap into? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. And what I'll say as far as the benefits of like mouth taping, you do a couple of things. Like you definitely dilate the sinuses because you have more of the nitric oxide. It's a vasodilator, but it really helps dilate the sinuses and that's antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal, antiviral. Like that stuff is really good at, filtering the air. So automatically, if you have more filtered, cleaner air, you're putting yourself in a, 
in a more parasympathetic and more rex, uh, relaxed uh, stress-free state. Um, you're also over time, like it's difficult to nasal breathe if you're not used to it, especially like when you're sleeping or trying to go to sleep or when you're exercising, because it's a slower way to breathe. And a lot of people don't have that high tolerance to CO2, which is acidic. So like, you know, we use oxygen and we convert it to CO2 and we see this buildup in CO2, we get the urge to breathe. That's really what drives the urge to breathe. It's not so much being low in oxygen. It's more so accumulating CO2. And so nasal breathing, it's, it takes more time to offload that CO2. So when you first start doing these strategies, it's going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to have this air hunger as Patrick McKeown describes. Um, but that's something that you'll overcome within a few days or weeks. And automatically you're going to have everything from like a higher lactate threshold to, so you can go harder for longer to even an increased VO2 max. Um, you in, will increase your HRV. Um, you know, you have all these amazing performance benefits and yeah, like I work with a lot of these elite performers. Some of them are mental, some of them are physical, some of them are both. Um, but I'm really passionate about making this accessible to everyone. Like I have the pleasure of working with these people whenever I work with them all the time, I'm always thinking and wishing that more people had access to this information because that's exactly how I felt along my fitness journey. I got into this because, and I don't want to kind of, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole, but I got into this because I needed to improve my health. And I was, you know, I went to study physiology, uh, psychology and nutrition, and I'm doing a master's in neuroscience. And I would go into every single class and I would learn things about my body that I was almost offended that it had to be in class for. Like I, I learned things about my body that, that I think everyone should know. And through the podcast and all the content that I make, I hope to make it more accessible because it's what I wish I had even earlier on in my journey. So I'm always thinking about that with these clients. And yeah, what I can recommend right now for the folks tuning in, notice how you're breathing. Like no matter what you're doing right now, notice how you're breathing. You know, bring that awareness to your body. Are you using your nose or are you using your mouth? You know, like you said, you had to have multiple surgeries. And by the way, I noticed that dairy also leads to a lot of this like mucus buildup in my sinuses. I didn't really know, realize that until I got really into spear fishing and free diving because you have to have super clear sinuses to equalize. And the days that I had dairy, I just, I couldn't even hold my breath for like a minute. And, and my, my, my breath hold with, with training has gone up to five minutes. So it's like, I, it, it made a massive impact. Um, so I, you know, I still have dairy, but I typically have dairy that's lower in lactose. So like Parmesan cheese, for example, or Greek yogurt. If I have whey protein, it's always whey isolate. Um, so all of these are like virtually lactose free uh, or very, very low lactose because like in the Greek yogurt, it's fermented. Um, so anyway, like that's helped a lot. Surrounding dives, I don't eat any dairy at all. And um, anyway, going back to what people can do, notice how you're breathing. Um, Nasal breathing is your best friend. Try to nasal breathe as much as you can. Start by nasal breathing right now. Then you can start to do maybe nasal breathing as you walk up steps, uh, maybe with a light jog or just for a few seconds. Uh, you can try nasal breathing if you are totally unaccustomed. You can just do it maybe between telephone poles if you're walking around or every intersection you nasal breathe and then you kind of you know, catch your breath, et cetera. Uh, but over time, you know, you want to do nasal breathing, let's say during your training. So like now, and again, I don't recommend that anyone tuning in does this immediately because it can actually be in a way sort of toxic if you have too much of this buildup and you don't, you can't effectively clear the, 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 um, the CO2. Um, but like I do all my training now, I would say 90 to 95% nasal breathing. I only mouth breathe in like, if I do like a full out sprint and I'm like totally winded, but even now most of my sprints are hundred percent nasal breathing. I've even gone as far as to do uh, sprints while holding my breath. So like there's a whole range and a whole spectrum. I recommend that people start very, 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 very small and slowly build that up. 